All right, uh, welcome to this uh, series, Headline Makers, where we bring uh, stories from the newsrooms and the people be, uh, behind those newsrooms who are working day in and day out to make those newsrooms the biggest newsrooms that we have. And today we have uh, Ms. Shireen Ban. Uh, she is the managing editor of CNBC TV 18, who is our headline maker uh, on this episode. Thank you, Shireen, for joining us. Well, Rail, thank you very much. And welcome to the brand new CNBC office here. Uh, uh, it's great to have you join us. We literally have opened uh, for business in this new facility like uh, a few days ago. So it's great to have you visit yeah, us absolutely. here. And also the role reversal, you know, I'm so excited <laughs> about this, you know, asking questions to someone who asks I prefer, questions. Daily. I still prefer asking the questions as opposed to answering them, but I'll try and do my best. <laughs> Thank you so much. So let me, uh, you know, so we uh, profile the journeys, you know, it's not just that what we see on screen, there's a whole story behind it. And if I talk about your two decade plus career in, in um, TV, um, how has the journey panned out for you uh, from a producer to an anchor to now the face of the channel? Well, you know, the journey has been uh, very fulfilling, very interesting. It's been a great experience to really watch uh, the country change, the landscape that the media operates in change, uh, the opportunities that have opened up. It's uh, to be able to chronicle all of that has really been interesting and satisfying. You know, when, when I started in, in 2000, and this is right after I finished my master's, and it was while I was doing my master's that I decided to get into broadcast journalism. I was doing a program uh, that Siddharth Basu was producing in Veer Sangvi was anchoring and my job was really to come out there and rally the audience. It was a current affairs program which had a live audience and so I had to sort of get the audience up to speed about this is what we're debating and these are the pros and cons and so on and so forth and I really enjoyed that process uh, and when they saw me do that Veer and Siddharth said that look have you considered broadcast journalism if you haven't we think that you have a flair for news you have a sense and smell for the news and and that really was the start of the love affair with broadcast journalism, uh, with uh, the news media. And I haven't looked back since then. So much has changed, uh, some for the good, uh, some not for the good. Uh, you know, we when we, we started at CNBC TV 18, we didn't have OB vans. You were literally pushing tape, uh, you know, from, from right. here to VSNL and so on and so forth. Uh, and today, you know, you're, you're being able to broadcast using your mobile phones anywhere uh, in the world. So uh, from a technology point of view, from a distribution point of view, uh, so much has changed. Uh, but, um, you know, I, and, and you said that I've, I, I'm today the face of, of, the, of the channel and that's only because, uh, you know, I'm one of the faces. I'm not, I don't believe I am the face. I'm one of the faces of the, of the channel. I am perhaps one of the oldest faces of the channel because I've been here uh, for 20 plus years. Uh, but uh, what's been interesting is also the fact that I've multitasked my way through this journey. So I didn't start out only as an anchor and I haven't been just an anchor. I've produced, I've written, I continue to produce and write my own shows. Uh, I continue to work with reporters uh, on their stories. Uh, I continue to work on my own stories. Uh, so it's, it's really been uh, an exercise in versatility and I think that that has also helped me uh, become a much more uh, consummate television news professional today. Absolutely. And you know, you know, 20 plus years of uh, TV uh, career, uh, in TV career, and then day in and day out, uh, staying on top of uh, uh, the, the kind of, you know, uh, markets that you cover, the stories that you bring out. Is it, how do you manage to stay on top of, uh, you know, this uh, genre, even after uh, so many years? I mean, day in and day out, don't you get tired of uh, doing it every day? I mean, how, what motivates you to do that? You know, what motivates me is the fact that we don't take our leadership for granted. And I truly believe that because we enjoy an over 95% share of the market, it is incumbent on us to keep disrupting ourselves. So we, we're not waiting for somebody else to do something new or somebody else to go out there and innovate. I truly believe that it is our role and our responsibility to 
keep ourselves relevant to the audience that we're beaming out to. Uh, so what does that mean? That means looking at new spaces, looking at improving spaces where we already exist in. It's looking at creating new communities around content because I truly believe that that is one of the core areas that we must focus on. It's about looking at how do we get the audience to view business news differently. Uh, from the time that I started at CNBC TV 18, people viewed CNBC TV 18, I would say for the first 10, 15 years of our journey, only as a stock market channel. Today, we are much more than that. Today, we are a channel that provides you actionable, credible information that you can use to make smart life choices, smart life decisions, whether it's education, whether it's healthcare, whether it's insurance, stock markets, of course, but that's just one aspect of what we do. Of course, it is core to what we do, but we are so much more than that. We're about corporate India, we're about business, we're about balance sheets, we're about aspiration, we're about entrepreneurship. Uh, so, you know, I think the way that we've also expanded the business news genre, uh, and I think that because we were the leaders, it was incumbent on us to be able to do that. A lot of people have now followed suit and are, are looking at business news differently. And so, you know, my challenge uh, to myself is how do I walk into this newsroom every day uh, and get my team to feel excited about what they're doing and get my team to think about new ways of doing things. Uh, I've always been a believer in excellence, but you know, the road to excellence doesn't happen by accident. The road to excellence is built on daily improvement. And that is what uh, drives us in the newsroom. Can we do something different, something better, something new every day? Uh, and that keeps me motivated. And you know, I am fortunate to, to be passionate about what I do. Uh, and very, you know, very often in life, if you get the opportunity to marry your purpose, for me, the purpose that I've had is storytelling and marry that with my passion. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I'm fortunate to, to be able to do that. And so today, uh, yes, of course, you get frustrated and yes, you feel tired and yes, you get weighed down by the, the chaos of it all. But, you know, the goal uh, is very clear that we want to be a purposeful brand. We want to be a purpose driven brand. We want to continue to be relevant to the audience that that we reach out to. And that's what motivates us and keeps me going. Absolutely. You know, also, you are not just uh, uh, the face of the channel. I mean, of course, there are many, but you are not just the uh, face of the channel. But uh, there's also a bigger complex role of leadership. You know, you have to also manage teams. So between news uh, TV, which is so hectic, you know, and managing people, how do you how do you really balance things out? You know, you have to understand that this is a people business, right? So uh, that's your core asset. I mean, the equipment and the uh, stuff is is on top of that. But at the end of the day, if you don't have reporters breaking stories, if you don't have producers being able to write. Uh, good scripts, mm -hmm. uh, you, you're not going to be left with very much. So you have to acknowledge the fact that this is a people-centric business. Now, as leaders, we have to ensure that you have a motivated team. Uh, we have to ensure that you create an organization that listens. You have to ensure that you create an organization that takes feedback and acts on it. Uh, you have to ensure that you create a newsroom that is accessible, that's open, uh, that gives space for people to voice and air their opinions. I feel particularly proud of the fact that we've been able to create an organization uh, that is not hierarchical. Um, many of our star performers today who have really uh, jumped uh, in, in their careers have done so in the last few years. You know, they may have started off a year ago and today you see them anchoring shows, you see them uh, doing events, see them doing special programming and so on and so forth. Because I truly believe that you have to create space and a culture that is is merit based. If you allow meritocracy to flourish, you will be able to get the best ideas as opposed to focusing only on this is the organization structure and this is how it needs to work. I have always believed uh, that uh, structure cannot define function. Function must define structure. Uh, and so that has always uh, driven me to place who I believe are 
the best people for that particular job, irrespective of whether they've been in the organization for five years or 10 years. I think you have to look and place people based on the skills that they have and what is the function uh, that they need to deliver on. So, uh, so I think that's really the challenge as far as leaders are concerned. How do you remain agile? How do you remain dynamic? You know, the world is changing not every day, every minute, every second. How do you ensure that, uh, that uh, you're on top of that? Uh, how do you stay nimble? So how do you also stay humble? You know, as, as leaders, uh, I think you, you sometimes tend to believe in, in, um, in your own myth. And I've been very clear about the fact that I'm not in love with my own voice and I'm not in love with the fact that I want to be seen uh, on every show and so on and so forth. So you have to create space uh, that uh, that is accessible to people within your team. So people feel they're equal custodians of the brand. And that really drives me, creating this equal opportunity workspace, uh, creating a sense of um, of being custodians of this brand. I think that has been one of the big leadership challenges for me that I've sort of embraced and taken forward. No, wonderful. I think uh, that's a great space to come from, you know, in the sense of, I mean, the, the way you handle things and you don't uh, want to be the uh, the person in charge of everything. You know, you let people have stakes. You, you in, have to. You in, have to empower what people. What it has become, the brand has become. You, you know. have to empower people. You have to allow people to make decisions. Some decisions may may not go as per expectation, but that's fine. And your job as the leader is not to then come out and say, oh, look, I told you so. Your job is to say, what can we learn from this? How do we make this better? You have to stand by your people. You can't throw your people under the bus. That I'm very clear about. I mean, it's great. I mean, your team uh, team is really lucky to have a leader like this. You should ask them. <laughs> so when we talk of business news overall um, and we see how it has panned out over the years, uh, what are the bigger shifts that you have seen uh, and where it has arrived? where it is now at the moment? You know, I can speak uh, about the changes from a CNBC TV 18 perspective. So as I pointed out, you know, we started off being seen as a stock market channel because large part of the programming was based on what's happening in the markets today and so on and so forth. But today we're much more than that. So if I were to tell you that, you know, you could split us up into two halves. So from seven in the morning to four o'clock in, in the afternoon, which is when the markets are trading west, squarely uh, and sharply focused on the markets because that is what is relevant to our audience at that particular point in time. So we will give you the best analysis on what's happening in the markets, both domestic and global. And of course, we've innovated significantly there. The other aspect that we've really built out and, you know, you see this now, it's become it's become a household thing where you see managements coming on every quarter talking about their results. But that was something that CNBC TV 18 created, making managements, making company boardrooms accessible to you and me, to the retail, uh, you know, investor or to just a regular viewer. That is, I think, something that really changed the way, uh, uh, you know, of, of business reportage as well as access of just regular people to folks who are running businesses in, in the country. And post four o'clock, as I said, you know, that's the second half of the channel and it has its own identity. We look at everything that matters to us as a country. So if the morning is about balance sheet of companies uh, and the profit and loss as far as the markets are concerned, the evening is about the balance sheet of the country. So we look at what matters to consumers? Uh, you know, what are the reforms that are working? What are the reforms that are not working? Uh, you know, what needs to be done in terms of prioritization of, uh, of capital and so on and so forth. So the evening is about policy. It's about politics. It's about, as I said, entrepreneurship. It's about aspiration. It's about lifestyle. So we've sort of channeled our energies into two halves. Again, driven by what is relevant to our audience. And I, I, I find it very hard to believe, and I get this question very often, that, you know, why, why are you doing uh, stories on tomato prices? Not like your audience cares about that. How does my audience not care about that? You know, would a Hindustan Unilever, the management of Hindustan mm -hmm. Unilever, which I believe is, is our audience, not want to know what's happening with, with tomato prices? 
would the consumer not want to know what's happening with tomato prices so why should it not be my story why should manipur not be my story it impacts the balance sheet of this country it impacts the socio economic fabric of this country why should we stay silent on a story that is of national importance so i think those are the things that really drive um the decisions that we make in the newsroom in terms of prioritization uh, in terms of uh, what we talk about what we take up what we report on and as i said uh, uh you know uh, we we have very we have we have boundaries that the brand has provided for us so as i said you know we are essentially a business news brand so even when we look at politics we look at it from a different lens uh when we look at uh, reforms we look at it from a different lens so the lens is different but you know business does not uh does not run in a political vacuum for instance so we cannot abdicate spaces only because we're seen as a business news channel we have to ensure that we we occupy those spaces and make them our own and tell stories that using our lens i think yeah i mean giving business news a human angle not just about numbers i mean looking at what people are interested in right i think this is a shift of course i think in the second half as you said you know you look you focus on even stories that are human centric but have a business uh, you know aspect to them right? yeah and you know i mean i'll give you many examples for instance that uh, i would hold as uh, as significant contributions uh, of the brand so 21 years ago we started a program called young turks it is today one of the world's longest running programs on startups and entrepreneurship 21 years ago nobody was talking about startups nobody was talking about unicorns nobody was talking about any of that but we made that bet that is part of the kind of thought leadership that i was telling you about that as brands that occupy a leadership space we have to be thought leaders so 21 years ago we said look if the indian economy has opened up and the indian economy is going expected to grow at 78% well then there's going to be a, a a generation of entrepreneurs hopefully that will come up it's a different matter that i didn't expect it to run for 21 years but we created that space we provided that platform we gave regular kids the ability to dream and to think hey these kids from iit have gone on to create a company why can't i so you know that's that's been part of the journey as well and it's been a learning for us also uh, you know because these were bets that we made on the back of our gut instincts and over time they've paid off so we've also learned to uh, i would say uh, hone uh our gut instinct to see what are things what are those next big bets that that we can make that uh you know that really connect with the audience that connect with our viewers and continue to make the brand relevant uh in the market right um you know um absolutely i mean i do agree that is the role of uh, leadership being in a leadership position i think that's that's a role i mean which you have played and uh, of course then we have seen what happened to the startup world and the ecosystem and i think india has become the biggest example of successful startups uh, uh, you know i mean being on tv and interviewing so many people uh, of course it's a long list but then what are the moments that really uh, play back in your mind at times that or oh, you have still recall <clears throat> some some favorite moments some I mean from all i know it's a <laughs> very difficult uh, thing to kind of pinpoint two or three but if something comes to your mind what would that be that has really kind of you know uh, a moment that really has captured your imagination to say well there have been so many moments over the last two decades uh, it's hard to sort of pin pin down uh, some of them but you know uh, i treat every interview every conversation every show uh as something that i hope to learn from that i should be able to take back something from that and i should be able to give something to that as well so for me you know i'm very clear about that uh which is why i don't take my interviewer's time for granted i remember something that uh, that my first boss karan thapar taught me and you know he's very meticulous about research and due diligence and and those are the things that i hold very close uh you know as as principles that drive our newsroom as well and so for me uh, i don't walk into an interview saying kuch nikal ke leke aayenge you know i don't go in there with a 
pre-set of questions, with a prefix set of questions. But I go in there with, okay, what are the issues that I can talk about, uh, which could be interesting? You know, what, where can I lead that conversation, which could be interesting? Uh, so I go in there well prepared and I continue to do that. I make the effort because I don't want to take uh, the interviewer's time for granted and I certainly don't want to take my audience's time for granted because if anybody is, is investing 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, whatever, uh, you know, minutes of their life watching your show or sitting down and having a conversation with you, then as I said, they need to feel they take something back from that experience and I need to feel I have taken something back from that experience and the audience needs to feel that they have benefited in some form or fashion from watching that program. And so that has always driven my process as far as um, putting a show together, doing an interview, etc. is concerned. And there's so much I've learned. I mean, you know, um, uh, from from the initial days of being able to interview I, I, people like Bill Gates, where you never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined that as a, you know, 20 something year old, I would be sitting down and having a conversation with somebody like Bill Gates or with somebody like Benazir Bhutto, uh, which was very, very early on in my career. And I was like, you know, in my early 20s. So I, I think those are the experiences that, you know, that still stay very fresh uh, in your memory because, uh, you know, you look back and say, what what gave you the confidence? I mean, now I think like, I mean, how did I, how did I, you know, how did I do that? Um, uh, and uh, so, so those are some of the, the yeah. you know, the memories of, of um, you know, just sort of uh, walking through the Infosys campus with uh, N.R. Narayanamurthy and Nanda Nilikani, a show that they did together for the very first time, you know, way back then. It's, it's just so many wonderful experiences with all kinds of different people in India and, and abroad that uh, it's hard to pin them down. As you said, and I also read that uh, you are hands on person. I mean, even if you have uh, the teams with you, you will still go and do your own research. Um, I mean, how do you stay disciplined? I mean, I mean, in a daily 20, we all have 24 hours and so much to do. Um, so many things come up. I mean, how do you manage your time, by the way? this I have to ask you this question. No, you know, it, look, it comes down to prioritization. And I think that uh, you have to, you know, you've got to focus on what is what is the most important job that I need to get done today. Uh, you know, what is the most important interview of the day? And then accordingly, you know, spend more time on that. So if I'm doing a big interview that I know is good, with a big headliner, etc., I will spend more part of my day researching or focusing or preparing uh, for that versus, you know, something else that I may or may not be doing. So I think it boils down to prioritization. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, as I said, if you, if you walk into the newsroom with the approach that and the attitude uh, that what you do has to have meaning what you do has to have substance then you know then you it make the come, right. and you make the effort you right. get the job done so right. you know I, I think that attitude is just something that you have to relive every single day it, it and it doesn't happen again as I said by accident you have to live that uh, uh, every day but you know Time management is really about prioritization, and uh, it, I would be, I would be um, uh, sort of lying if I said that it's uh, it's easy, or that sometimes uh, you don't drive yourself crazy trying to be able to do all things at one. There are days when you know you eat. Uh, lunch at dinner time or you <laughs> don't eat it at all right. or you know you you I mean I've, I've just come back from shooting um, in the US and I was working two time zones so I from you know I've been sleeping three hours so these are these are you know but it's part of the process and you just have to accept it there's no point fighting it I think the more you fight against something and the more you think oh my god I've only slept for three hours and now what's going to happen it stresses you out even more so you have to just accept okay this is it this is how it's going to be today so go with the flow you know so that's that's my approach at least I have two three more questions uh, one is about, you know, we uh, talk about Indian economy, of course, growing in a big way and all of that. And, and that impacts the news uh, associated with it. But if you see in the global mix uh, uh, and we talk of uh, business news, uh, where, uh, how much more can India do on that front? I mean, globally, I mean, how can 
Indian business news become globally more uh, attractive, uh, have more viewers. Do we are we thinking uh, on the those lines oh, as absolutely. leader? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Look, uh, you know, India is playing a larger role uh, as far as the global map is concerned. You know, whether you talk about uh, the growth of the economy or you talk about uh, you know, regional partnerships, bilateral partnerships, and so on and so forth. India is today, uh, you know, and it has successively been playing a larger and larger role, uh, you know, in, in the global order. And more so in the last few years, especially uh, post-COVID, where we are seeing this uh, global move towards, uh, you know, reframing uh, the global economy, uh, right. a change, a change in the way that people are looking at supply chains and so on and so forth, and that does bring India back into significance, uh, you know, as a as a as a destination that people are considering. And of course, it is the one of the world's largest markets, so companies want to be here you know it is a large addressable market so any multinational doesn't have the luxury now of saying india and or india or you have to have an india strategy and so for us how do we you know how do we take that forward i mean i i run a program called global dialogues for instance where we talk to global ceos and uh, and so you know the effort really is to understand how a global co company is looking at the india opportunity what are the changes that they've seen what kind of investments are they going to make and so on and so forth which you know will also help a global audience right. understand the India story. So yeah, absolutely. I do believe uh, that we need to focus on content uh, which will make India uh, accessible to a global audience and people will also be able to relate and understand about the changes that are taking place here in India. For instance, we've just commissioned a whole uh, series uh, on, on you know, the large infrastructure changes and infrastructure projects that we are uh, seeing. And so we're really capturing that story. We're capturing uh, the story of what's happening on the tech side, uh, on the policy side. So I think these are all things that a global audience will uh, will get perspective from on where India finds itself today and how they can really connect back with this story. And because we're now digital as well, mm -hmm. and through CNBCTV18.com, uh, we are trying to sort of, you know, not just do that on TV, but do it 360. So, uh, you know, through through CNBCTV18.com, through our YouTube channel, through our social media uh, pages, etc. We are trying to connect with the global audience as well. Right. You know, I mean, uh, uh, in between there was this conversation that, you know, uh, there are so many uh, mediums uh, mushrooming that how would TV stay relevant, but it has stayed relevant, you know, and it will continue to stay relevant. That is the belief. But how do you see the relevance of TV? What uh, bigger shifts need to happen to keep TV uh, you know, relevant for the audiences and they find meaning, keep finding meaning in it. For example, I recently spoke to someone and they said that news TV has become used to be for a reason because you have the headlines, but you don't have the perspective. Mm. So in that respect, how would business near TV, uh, you know, uh, stay relevant according to you? You know, uh, and, and here's how I look at it. I don't see us as a TV brand anymore. I see us as, as a 360 uh, brand. I see us as a news provider, as a content provider. And the distribution is up to the consumer. They want to consume us on TV. They want to consume us on their mobile phone. They want to consume us on uh, Twitter. They want to consume us on YouTube. That is a choice that the consumer is going to have to make. I have to ensure that whatever choice you make, you find me there. You know, that is our job. That, look, the world is changing. People may not necessarily be sitting in front of a television screen. So does that mean that my brand is no longer going to be relevant? I have to ensure that wherever the viewer is consuming news, I have to be present there. So the challenge for us is one of distribution. The challenge for one, for us is not content creation. We continue to create content. The challenge is customization of that content. Uh, what works on television doesn't necessarily work in exactly the same, same way form. on yeah. Twitter or on Instagram. So we have to, you know, and we've got great, we've got a very small team, but we've got a great team that looks at customizing our 
uh, content, our television content and uh, hosting it across different platforms. We're also now focused on digital first uh, content. So things that are specifically made for YouTube, made for Instagram, made for Twitter, made for, uh, you know, CNBCTV18.com, etc. So I think the challenge for us uh, and for brands in general uh, is one of how do you ensure that you're relevant in the areas that the consumer is moving to. So it's less of a content problem. As I said, it's more of a distribution uh, issue. And, and so that is, that's something that we've been sort of doing now actively uh, for the last two or three years. And there's a lot more uh, that needs to be done, I think, because everyone's figuring it out. I don't think anyone in India or globally has, has the perfect playbook on how do you address this. I think, you know, it's all trial and error at this point in time. Some bets are working, some are not. But it's, it's an exciting time because it's a time that challenges you. It's a time that also uh, gets you to go back to the drawing book unlearn some of the stuff that you had taken for granted and and learn uh, new ways of doing things uh, so so i think that's really the future at this point in time i think it is going to be a mix it's going to be a hybrid uh, you know of tv coexisting with other uh, mediums as well other platforms as well uh, but you have to engage with the audience where the audience is going yes. you cannot expect the audience to come to where you, you are to adapt yeah. to their exactly yeah requirements yeah. absolutely so we we see you on tv we see you hosting all the time i mean you're at work but when you are not working and you're not in the newsroom what do you like to do uh, I mean, how do you spend? like to spend your time? I'm very basic. I, I don't really have a long list of things that I like to do or not. I mean, I'm focused on uh, uh, food is my number one passion in life. So that is that is where I spend my time and my money, uh, finding finding new places uh, to to visit and eat at. I, uh, you know, spending time with my with my friends and with my family and uh, and uh, yoga. I think that's pretty pretty much the sort of, you know, uh, the sum and substance of what I really do outside of uh, outside of work. But I, as I said, I don't have a long list of things I want to do or, you know, things I want to see or so on and so forth. I'm more um, sort of go with the flow. One spiritual, so you have studied philosophy. So I have to ask you one around that, you know, um, even when I met you at our platforms, yeah. you know, <clears throat> one thing has stood out that uh, you came across the most humble and, you know, person to interact with because, of course, and then you have all the reason to kind of, you know, have all uh, the kind of word, word attitude that we use so often. But what keeps you grounded and humble? What is that magic thing that you're doing to stay humble? I don't take any of this seriously i don't uh, i don't take the fame seriously uh, i don't take uh, the trappings of glory and success and all of that that comes with this seriously of course i respect it i value it uh, i enjoy it but i don't uh, that doesn't define me it doesn't define who i am uh, and i i am very clear about the fact that it's all transient uh, going back to the the, the, the philosophical, <laughs> philosophical side of me i i truly believe it's transient i mean you know uh, people uh, the, the fame the adulation the you know all of that comes with the fact that you're visible on tv tomorrow if i'm not visible on tv it'll be a different story and so if you start to believe in your own myth and start to believe that oh i'm you know the greatest gift to mankind i i believe there's only one way to go and that's that's down downhill so i've always been very clear about the fact that I'm doing a job. Uh, one of the privileges of this job is the fact that I get to wear a microphone and I get to sit in front of a camera and I get to talk to the world. And so people believe uh, that I have something special to say or people believe that I'm, uh, you know, I'm visible. And so, you know, I, I get that recognition, etc. But that's that's my job. That is not who I am. Uh, and tomorrow, if this job doesn't exist, then, you know, it'll be a crisis of confidence for me if I were to sort of place everything uh, linked to my identity to this particular job. And it's really interesting because uh, I, I watched a video a couple of days ago, and, and this is exactly what that person said, that have you ever thought about the fact that when somebody asks you, what do you do? Or, you know, how do you define yourself? We always 
end up answering that with with our job titles yeah. or with our yeah. job Identity. description yeah. or our job description. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, I've been mindful of the fact that it is transient. It is a privilege and a perk of, of, uh, of the job that you have. And, you know, life is too short to, <laughs> to mm. take this stuff so seriously. So, yeah, I, I don't, mm. I don't do that. That's a beautiful uh, <laughs> mindset. Uh, I would definitely, definitely try to learn from, I mean, what you said is such a beautiful thought. Uh, last two questions, you know, um, one is who do you look up to? Uh, of course, you have, you, you have had great mentors, uh, but who do you look up to? What inspires, who inspires you? What do you read uh, to even stay updated? I mean, how, when do you get time to do all of that? You know, so the reading is really transactional. The reading is because, you know, so much of it is linked to the interviews that you're doing or the shows that you're doing, whatever, that by the end of the day, I, you know, now I struggle with what, finding time to just do some, uh, you know, non-work related reading. I still try and do that, but it's it becomes less and less. I, I mean, you know, you I find, I find, um, uh, inspiration or, uh, you know, I, I'm very lucky to have uh, had great mentors, um, you know, Karan Thapar, Siddharth Basu, Raghav Bell, Senthil Chengalvarayan, uh, you know, Mr. Murthy. The, the, I mean, all of these people have taught me so much uh, in, in, uh, in my professional uh, life. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm uh, a firm believer in in staying open to ideas, in staying open to what you see, what you read, um, and learning from that. So I, I get, you know, I get inspired by a conversation that I might have with a five-year-old, uh, or you know, a conversation that I might have with a ninety-year-old, um, and and I think that's what that's what keeps me alive, and that's what keeps me sort of uh, going and growing. Uh, and I think. Uh, I think, of course, for us as journalists, the the uh, I think curiosity has to be has to be instinctive. It has to be one of the key attributes, one of the key qualities. Um, and so, of course, you know, you're curious about what's happening around you, what's happening in the world. Uh, but I think it's also important uh, for me, uh, you know, as a human being, to have empathy. Uh, and I think that very often we sit in judgment on other people and I think we love to do it in the media where you know you you want to hold everyone and everyone you know everything else to account but yourself uh, and uh, and I I always feel that you need to you need to have empathy for uh, for the people uh, that you work with for the people that you report on and that's that's not to say that you know you need to softball or that's not to say that you need to um, not do hard hitting reportage etc but you need to have basic human decency uh, you need to have um, uh, courtesy and manners uh, about how you approach people or how you treat people and I, and that's important to me as a human being i don't ever want uh, you know, I, I will not raise my voice on television. I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that uh, in my personal life. I will not uh, get into a confrontation. I will, I will ask you hard-hitting questions, but I will do it in a way that is acceptable to me as a human being. And I would expect that I get treated in a similar way as well. So I think those are the things that I'm very mindful of. Um, and, and, I, and I hope... And I pray that we do see some degree of sanity return return to to newsrooms as well, because uh, you know there's there's a certain there's a line I think that uh, that existed where uh, you 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 operated in an environment where uh, what and again as I said you know you ask the hard hitting questions you ask the tough questions based on fact not based on noise. Right. Uh, and I think that is something that we need to reclaim uh, as, as the and news business it, today. Bring it back to television. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, um, you know, a lot of youngsters are looking at, uh, uh, of course, uh, the career in uh, business news, uh, TV, news TV. What is your advice uh, to them? I mean, 
how can they kind of you know uh, kind of learn uh, what should what kind of skills and because things have changed the era has changed what is your advice to them you know my only advice uh, would be be clear th- about why you want to do this uh, you know I, I, and this is the first question that i ask people who come looking for a job are you doing this because you want to be on tv if the answer to that is yes uh, i you know i'm like you know you need to you need to review or evaluate beyond that because it's not just about being on tv being on tv is the 5 minutes or the 10 minutes and if you're an anchor maybe a little bit longer but it's the stuff that goes beyond that you know with the 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 hours and hours of work that you need to put in to be able to get that 5 minutes on tv and if you're not ready to do the time uh, then this is not the the place for you because this is a job that is 24/7 it is a job that like the medical profession like law enforcement is 24/7 i can't remember the last time i've switched my phone off uh, you know and and when when there is breaking news you can't say oh i'm sorry i'm watching a movie or <laughs> i'm uh, you know having dinner yeah. or i'm whatever you know you have to you have to you have to make mm-hmm. sacrifices and these are personal sacrifices that you will have to make and if you have the attitude of of uh, saying that um that's not going to work for me well then this is not the right space for you uh, you know so you you need to be very clear about that um and and you need to be clear about what drives you what motivates you because again as i keep pointing out that you know the 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 fame and the success it takes time uh it there is no shortcut to it uh and you know you will have to work long hours you will have to uh work perhaps sometimes for years before you get those those breaks if you're lucky you'll get them early on uh but you have to have patience you have to have perseverance uh you have to have curiosity um you have to have a lot of passion for what you do and uh, you you really have to come with uh with a with a learning mindset um and, and i think those are the things that i would i you know if if that's that's your jam then this is the <laughs> <laughs> this is the place this for you place. Okay, so the interview is incomplete without a question around uh, the new office yes. space that uh, we are in. Um, so, I mean, I can see you know things changed. I mean, what is uh, what is it like? I mean, I mean, so we've we've literally just moved here. It was bittersweet because we left our, our studios and our uh, office in uh, Film City, where we were housed for almost eighteen years. Uh, but this is a new start. It's a new beginning, and uh, you know the uh, the entire network is going to be in this building. So all all twenty plus channels will be housed here, and websites will be. Uh, housed here so in that sense it becomes a sort of network 18 family. <laughs> yes network right, 18 sure. family all all so. all together so right. that's the, that's great uh, it's a you know it's a uh, very large space as you can see so we're also now uh, working with converge team so the tv team the digital team everyone sort of operating together there are no silos um, and and so you know it's much more sort of cohesive uh, and collaborative and um, you know lots of nice natural light coming in we of course continue to have an open studio uh, so it that also that also means that people here have to be more disciplined because you know <laughs> any if you're having loud yeah. conversations etc yeah. the mics will pick it yeah. up here uh, but uh, yeah but it's a it's a new start for us and we're excited about it sure it's been a pleasure talking to you on headline makers really really and i enjoyed this role reversal <laughs> i really enjoyed the conversation and a lot of learnings from you as well thank you so much rohil thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure and uh, uh, thank you for for your time and for giving me the opportunity thank you so much thank you